Well, the story is much, much deeper and seemingly shrouded in a profound mystery. We find on three occasions, children of Israel face the water crisis. The first one, when they just see an astounding miracle that the Lord performed as he parted the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds. Just three days after that, in Exodus 15 verses beginning from 22nd to 27, as the waters were bitter, and God showed Moses the tree, he took the branch and put in the water, and bitter waters became sweet. That's the first time. And then the second crisis rises up in Exodus 17, verse number 6 onwards, when eventually we see that God is commanding Moses to take his rod and strike the rock. And as Moses did, the Midrash and Jashir and Zohar, the other Jewish heritage, say the 12 fountains gushed out of the rock in the wilderness. And the third one, when the children of Israel are in Kadesh Barnea, the last city in the wilderness, very much on the cusp of the promised land, the place from where they can actually see the promised land. The third crisis occurs there. And if we read Numbers chapter number 20, verse number, verse number 10, here we find the third crisis. If you look into Numbers chapter number 20, you find um, a deep connection beginning from verse number 1 with the entire episode of water crises the children of Israel faced in the wilderness. Uh, numbers 20 verse number 1, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. This is the last point from where the children of Israel can just step into the promised land. This is seemingly the threshold of their promise. Their promise beckons from ahead. But Miriam dies here. And if you read the second verse in the original Hebrew grammar, there is a vav that is, vav that is used as a connector. So that vav actually shows that verse number one is connected to the entire story of all three water crises. The first one, the waters were bitter. Now this mystery is actually hidden in the name. The name Miriam. There are four Hebrew letters. Mem, Resh, Yud, Mem. Mem, Resh, Yud, Mem. And Mem is a symbol of water. And the final Mem is Mem Sufit. So there are two symbolic waters in a name. Mem, water, Resh, the head, Yud, the hand, and Mem, the water. But the, but the whole thing is in the Nikut. The Nikud. You know these vowel signs that are used underneath or right above the Hebrew uh, alphabets? The first name... The, you know the name Miriam, Memresh, Yud, Mem. This, uh, these four Hebrew uh, alphabets, they create three different words. The first word they create is uh, Miriam, which means bitter. The second word they create is Meriam, which means to lift up the hand. And the third word they create is Moriam which means rebel, they who violate the law of the Lord. Now here we see in verse number, in chapter 20, verse number 1, Miriam dies and second verse is actually pushing us into the story that is happening right after. And there was no water for the congregation. Now the water is no more. The first crisis comes Three days after the Red Sea is parted. 
Exodus 15 verses 20 second onwards till verse number 27 and the second crisis is right after which is in Exodus chapter number 17 verse number 6. The first one you know that tree branch actually heals the bitter water so that tree branch is a symbol of Jesus Christ dying on the cross healing all our bitterness and then the second occasion the Lord tells Moses to strike the rock and Moses does and so many Jewish resources say that 12 streams of um, waters gush out of the rock. So here we see three different shades of Miriam's name. One is bitter, the wat bitter waters were healed. The second is to lift up the hand and the third one is rebel. Now we see these all three here in Numbers chapter number 20 and if you read verse number 10 and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and he said unto them here now ye rebels so that's the second uh, meaning of Miriam which is Mer which is um, which is Moriam rebel and then 11th verse and Moses lifted up his hand which is Moriam to lift up the hand. So all these three occasions are connected with the life of Miriam. When the Lord opened up the rock in 12 fountains, that rock became Miriam's well, the well of Miriam. Miriam is connected with the waters as Moses' mother put Moses in the basket. Miriam stands there. If you read... Exodus chapter number 2 verse number 4. Miriam stands on the bank of river Nile and she continually looks at the basket. Maybe she thinks in her heart that there is no option. Pharaoh is very cruel. All male children are thrown in river Nile or are killed. And you know there seems no way that her beloved brother could be saved. But Miriam stands in faith. When there is no option available, when there seems no way, when human logic fails, stand up in faith. So Miriam stands at the waters of River Nile in faith and God does a miracle. And a brother enters into the royal palace and is going to become the next heir of great and mighty Egyptian empire. And second place, where the waters of the Red Sea are parted miraculously and Moses lifted up the rod. We see Miriam takes the tambourine and dances and sings before the Lord, the song of Miriam. And then we see right after that rock becomes the well of Miriam. So from that point till they reach Kadesh Barnia, it's nearly 40 years. 39 plus years. They never had any issue of water. How was their water supply met? Nearly 3 million people. And their animal and cattle, they were 10 times more. 3 million divided by 10. How the water was supernaturally provided? That rock, Paul the Apostle writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4, that rock that flew after them. That rock became the well of Miriam. Now Miriam dies, chapter number 20. And this is the last water crisis the children of Israel face. And Moses has a terrible experience. The second time when the water crisis arose and God told Moses to strike the rock, children of Israel were so violent that they were about to stone Moses. So that fear is so vividly etched in Moses' mind, children of Israel could kill him alive. Here we see Moses' beloved sister dies and was buried. And in the second verse, as I said, in Hebrew, you have a vav as a connector that shows that story from first verse is pushed into the second verse. And there is a water crisis. You know, Moses died, Aaron died, people lamented for them. They mourned like 40 days, 30 days, 7 days. But for Miriam, they never mourned. Because they face 
a great crisis there is no water and we see the same phenomena children of israel grumbling and murmuring moses is so heartbroken he is so nost- nostalgic of, of his sister he remembers how miriam is connected with the supply of the water how she was there singing when second time uh, he smote the rock and the water gushed out now his sister is dead she is not there hallelujah you know sometime we have a tendency to artificially replicate the world in which we um, saw our previous miracle and we want god to replicate the same thing maybe moses is trying to do that maybe moses is you know so much wanting in his heart if miriam were alive but what god is telling moses god is telling moses something new something that moses never anticipated god despite the great upheaval chaos and great murmuring of the children of israel at the backdrop moses is remembering how they were about to stone him that great fear and on the top of that moses's heart is really churned with grief because he hasn't mourned for his sister he is feeling the loss of his sister in his heart god tells moses go and stand in faith and speak to the rock something that is very difficult at times for us to do to just simply stand in faith miriam stood in faith on the bank of river nile and expected god to do a miracle for his beloved brother moshe and god did it so god is telling moses just speak to the rock and we have a tendency to fall back to the previous miracle we have a tendency to turn god into a dead religion moses smote the rock because of the peer pressure and god told him since you disobeyed me and moses said are we are we supposed to give you the water moses diverted god's glory towards him and his brother he shifted the focus on him and his brother and the lord god barred him from entering into the land of promise